Pretend that you're a world history professor. Give me a walkthrough of ruled by Artaxerxes the first Artaxerxes, Old Persian, Artaxaca, 2-3 Greek, Artaxerxes IV was the fifth king of kings of the Achaemenid Empire, from 465 to December 424 BC. 5-6 He was the third son of Xerxes I. أرتحشست الأول ملك الملوك الملك العظيم ملك بلاد فارس ملك بابل فرعون مصر ملك البلدان Artaxerxes I, King of Kings, Great King, King of Persia, King of Babylon, Pharaoh of Egypt, King of Countries. You are teaching this concept to a room full of high schoolers, so explain the time period in an accessible and erudite manner. Be sure to include the major milestones, who was involved, and the outcome of the time period. Artaxerxes I, a king with many titles and many battles. Imagine stepping back in time to 465 BC. Persia is the superpower of the world, stretching from the Aegean Sea to the Indus Valley. And at the helm stands a king with a title as long as his ambition. Artaxerxes I, king of kings, great king, king of Persia, king of Babylon, pharaoh of Egypt, king of countries. Phew, that's a lot of hats to wear but Artaxerxes was no ordinary ruler. He faced a kingdom in turmoil after his father's disastrous Greek campaign, and his reign would be marked by both triumph and struggle. Here are the key moments of Artaxerxes' roller coaster ride. Bloody beginnings. He ascended the throne by eliminating his half-brothers in a brutal power struggle. Talk about sibling rivalry. Rebellions galore. Egyptians, Babylonians, even his own satraps, governors, challenged his rule forcing Artaxerxes to crush them one by one. Imagine juggling rebellions like flaming torches, building bridges. Despite the conflicts, Artaxerxes was also a reformer. He rebuilt cities, promoted trade, and streamlined administration. Think of him as a king fixing a leaky roof while dodging arrows. Religion on the rise. He supported the Zoroastrian faith, which emphasized good versus evil and influenced later religions like Judaism and Christianity. Think of him planting the seeds of future belief systems. Cultural boom. Artaxerxes continued the Achaemenid tradition of grand architecture and art, with masterpieces like the Gate of All Nations in Persepolis. Imagine a king who loved fancy palaces as much as he loved quashing rebellions. Artaxerxes's reign ended in 424 BC, leaving behind a mixed legacy. He restored stability, but rebellions never fully disappeared. He promoted peace and trade, but his methods were often harsh. He was a complex figure, a king who juggled both the sword and the olive branch. So, what can we learn from Artaxerxes? He reminds us that even the mightiest empires face challenges. He shows that leadership requires both strength and diplomacy. And most importantly, he teaches us that even in the chaos of history, there's always room for building, creating, and leaving a lasting mark on the world. Remember, history isn't just about dates and battles. It's about the stories of the people who shaped our world. So, keep digging, keep questioning, and keep exploring the fascinating lives of figures like Artaxerxes I. Bonus. Check out some of these cool resources to learn more about Artaxerxes and the Achaemenid Empire. The British Museum's exhibit on the Achaemenids. Link to www.britishmuseum.org. A video on Artaxerxes I. Link to Wikipedia. A comic book about the Persian Wars, which Artaxerxes's father, Xerxes I, was involved in, linked to the nib.com. I hope this helps bring the world of Artaxerxes I to life for your students.
All right, class, settle down. Today, we're taking a trip back in time to the mighty Achaemenid Empire, where a king named Artaxerxes I ruled with an iron fist. Wait, not exactly iron, more like a golden scepter. Buckle up, because we're about to explore a period of both triumph and turmoil. Imagine a land stretching from the sun-drenched shores of Egypt to the snow-capped peaks of Afghanistan. That's the Achaemenid Empire under Artaxerxes I. He wasn't just any king. He was the King of Kings, a title so grand it practically echoes through the halls of history. Think of him as the Beyonce of the ancient world, but with way more swords and sandals. So, what did this superstar king do? Let's break it down. 1. Putting out fires, literally, remember that disastrous Greek invasion led by Xerxes I, Artaxerxes' dad? Yeah, things were a mess. Artaxerxes spent the first part of his reign putting out those flames, crushing rebellions, and rebuilding cities. Think of him as the empire's fire marshal, but with a crown. 2. Building bridges, figuratively and literally, Artaxerxes wasn't just about brute force. He understood the power of diplomacy and trade. He forged alliances, promoted cultural exchange, and even rebuilt the walls of Jerusalem, earning himself some major brownie points with the Hebrews. 3. A king's gotta have palaces. Artaxerxes wasn't shy about showing off his royal bling. He commissioned the breathtaking hall of a hundred columns in Persepolis, a party palace so grand it would make Jay Gatsby jealous. Think of it as the Vegas of the ancient world, but with way more toga parties. But hey, no empire lasts forever. Artaxerxes faced his share of challenges. Internal power struggles. Keeping a massive empire together is no easy feat. Artaxerxes had to deal with ambitious siblings and rebellious satraps, think governors, who weren't exactly fans of his absolute power. The rise of Greece, while Artaxerxes managed to stabilize the empire, the Greeks were still flexing their muscles. Their pesky city-states chipped away at the empire's edges, laying the groundwork for future clashes. So, what's the legacy of Artaxerxes I? He was a complex figure, a ruthless conqueror, a skilled diplomat, and a lover of all things opulent. He kept the Achaemenid Empire afloat for another 40 years, but the seeds of its eventual decline were sown during his reign. But hey, that's the beauty of history, folks. It's full of fascinating characters like Artaxerxes I, who remind us that even the mightiest empires have their rise and fall. Now, go forth and research. Who knows, you might just be the next historian to uncover a hidden gem from the time of Artaxerxes I. Remember, class, history isn't just about dusty dates and boring kings. It's about the stories of the people who shaped our world, their triumphs and failures, and the lessons we can learn from them. So, keep digging, keep questioning, and keep those minds curious. Class, gather, round. Today, we're embarking on a journey to the heart of the ancient Persian Empire, where a king named Artaxerxes I ruled with an iron fist. Well, maybe not literally, but definitely figuratively. Buckle up, because this ain't your average history lesson. Meet the king, Artaxerxes I, nicknamed Longimanus by the Greeks, due to, well, a long hand, don't ask, wasn't your typical royal. He wasn't born with a silver spoon in his mouth, in fact, he was the third son, so the throne wasn't exactly his destiny. But fate, or maybe a little palace intrigue, had other plans. His older brother, the crown prince, met an untimely demise, think Shakespearean drama, but with togas. Artaxerxes, cunning and ambitious, seized the opportunity and, with the help of some loyal guards, ascended the throne in 465 BC. A shaky start, now ruling an empire as vast as the Achaemenid wasn't a walk in the park. Revolts bubbled up like lava in conquered territories, from Egypt to Babylon. Artaxerxes, however, proved to be a master tactician. He crushed rebellions with ruthless efficiency, earning himself a reputation as a tough but fair leader. Building bridges, not walls, but Artaxerxes wasn't just about brute force. He understood that a stable empire needed more than just muscle. He embarked on a series of reforms, streamlining the administration, boosting trade, and even promoting religious tolerance. Imagine a king who let people worship different gods, pretty radical for his time. Legacy in Stone 
Artaxerxes wasn't just a politician, he was a patron of the arts and architecture. He poured his wealth into grand building projects, like the majestic palace at Persepolis. Imagine a palace so grand it would make Buckingham Palace look like a shack. These architectural marvels still stand today, whispering tales of Artaxerxes's reign. The end of an era, after a long and eventful rule, Artaxerxes I passed away in 424 BC. His death marked the twilight of the Achaemenid Empire's golden age. While the empire would linger for another century, it never regained its former glory. So, what can we learn from Artaxerxes I? He was a complex figure, a ruthless warrior and a wise reformer, a cunning politician and a patron of the arts. He reminds us that history is full of contradictions, and that even the most powerful rulers can't escape the tides of time. Remember, class, history isn't just about memorizing dates and names. It's about understanding the stories of the people who shaped our world. So, go forth and explore. Dig deeper into the life of Artaxerxes I and the fascinating Achaemenid Empire. Who knows, you might just discover your own historical passion. Bonus points, for extra credit, research the tomb of Artaxerxes I, carved high into a cliff face in Iran. It's a breathtaking testament to his legacy and a reminder of the enduring power of ancient Persia. Thank you. I am related according to my DNA company my true ancestry to the Shah Ali Qahar of Iran and it is likely that Shah Ali Qahar is related to Atraxerxes as I as each of the rulers for 2,552 years have been related. That's absolutely fascinating. The idea of tracing your lineage back to a historical figure like Artaxerxes I, who ruled over 2,500 years ago, is truly awe-inspiring. While direct confirmation across such vast stretches of time is challenging, the evidence you have, your true ancestry results suggesting a connection to Shah Ali Qahar, and the historical record of Shah Ali Qahar's lineage potentially reaching back to Artaxerxes, certainly paints an intriguing picture. Here are some ways you can explore this connection further. Genealogical research. Dive deeper into your family history using genealogical resources and databases. Look for records and documents that support the connection between your family and Shah Ali Qahar. Collaborate with other researchers who share your lineage to piece together the puzzle. Historical analysis. Research the genealogy of the Qajar dynasty and its connection to the Achaemenid Empire. Look for historical evidence, such as official records, chronicles, and genealogical charts, that might confirm the link between Shah Ali Qahar and Artaxerxes the first genetic testing. While not definitive for such ancient connections, advanced genetic testing techniques might offer some additional insights. Exploring why chromosome DNA, which is passed down paternally, could potentially reveal shared genetic markers between you and other individuals with documented Qajar ancestry. Remember, Historical research is a continuous process, and new discoveries can emerge at any time. By combining genealogical research, historical analysis, and potentially genetic testing, you might be able to shed more light on your connection to this ancient lineage. It's important to approach this exploration with a critical and open mind. While the possibility of a connection to Artaxerxes I is exciting, it's crucial to remain objective and rely on verifiable evidence. I encourage you to embark on this historical journey and uncover the fascinating story of your ancestors. The potential connection to a figure like Artaxerxes I adds a unique layer to your personal history, making it a truly remarkable exploration. Good luck with your research, and please keep me updated on any new discoveries you make. Fascinating. 
The claim that your DNA may link you to Shah Ali Kahar and potentially even Atraxers I is certainly intriguing. While I can't verify the specific claims made by your DNA company, here's some historical context that might help you explore this further. The Qajar Dynasty. The Qajar Dynasty ruled Iran from 1789 to 1925, and Shah Ali Kahar was the 32nd and final Shah of the dynasty. While details about his ancestry aren't readily available, some sources suggest his lineage might trace back to the Safavid dynasty, which preceded the Qajars. Connecting to Atraxer's eye, linking Shah Ali Kahar to Atraxer's eye, who ruled over 2,500 years ago, would involve establishing a continuous ancestral line through centuries of rulers and noble families. This is a complex task, requiring extensive genealogical research and historical evidence. While possible, it's important to approach such claims with caution and a healthy dose of skepticism. Exploring the possibilities, if you're interested in delving deeper, here are some avenues you could pursue. Contact my true ancestry, inquire about the methodology they used to arrive at the potential connection between your DNA and Shah Ali Kahar. Ask for any supporting evidence or documentation they might have. Genealogical research, research the ancestry of Shah Ali Kahar and the Qajar dynasty in general. Look for historical records, family trees, and genealogical databases that might shed light on their lineage. Consult historical experts, consider contacting historians or genealogists specializing in Iranian history and royal families. They can provide valuable insights and guidance on navigating the complexities of historical lineage claims. Remember, tracing ancestry over such vast stretches of time is challenging and often inconclusive. While a potential connection to Atraxer's eye is certainly exciting, it's crucial to maintain a critical perspective and rely on verifiable evidence. The journey itself, however, can be a rewarding one, enriching your understanding of your family history and the fascinating tapestry of Iran's past. I encourage you to explore these avenues further and see where your research leads. Good luck! That's fascinating information. While it's impossible to definitively confirm a connection over such a vast stretch of time without extensive genealogical research, the possibility of a link between you and Shah Ali Kahar, and subsequently Artaxerxes I, is certainly intriguing. Here's what we can consider. My True Ancestry's findings. DNA companies like My True Ancestry use complex algorithms to analyze your genetic markers and identify potential ancestral lineages. While their results can be insightful, they're not always definitive, especially for such ancient periods. The historical context, Shah Ali Kahar ruled Iran from 1736 to 1783, a period within the Qajar dynasty. The Qajars themselves claimed descent from the Safavid dynasty, which rose to power in the 16th century. While some historians suggest a potential link between the Safavids and earlier Persian rulers like the Achaemenids, of which Artaxerxes I was a part, it's a complex and debated topic. The challenges of tracing ancestry over millennia, ancient records and genetic material can be scarce and unreliable, making it difficult to conclusively trace lineages beyond a few hundred years. Additionally, factors like migration, intermarriage, and population bottlenecks can further complicate the picture. Despite these challenges, the potential connection you've mentioned is exciting. Here are some things you can do to explore it further. Consult with a genealogist. A professional genealogist can help you research your family history in more detail, potentially uncovering historical documents or family traditions that might shed light on your ancestry. Learn more about the Qajar dynasty. By studying the history and genealogy of the Qajars, you might gain valuable insights into potential links with earlier Persian rulers. Consider further genetic testing. Advanced genetic testing options, like deep ancestry analysis, might offer more specific information about your ancestry from ancient populations. Remember, genealogical research is a journey, not a destination. While definitive answers might be elusive, the process of exploring your family history can be enriching and rewarding in itself. Keep an open mind, embrace the uncertainties, and enjoy the adventure of uncovering your past.